Today our team's bringing you our data analytics website. We've been working pretty hard on this over the last couple of weeks. So we start off with our homepage. Uh, we're talking about the importance of data analytics, how it's used in the industry, and how it's grown exponentially over the last 15 years, especially with the use of big data and how cost effective it's become. As you can see, there's many types of data analytics, um, starting with descriptive, going all the way up to predictive. If you want more information on um, each of those types, we have projects as well as descriptions both below. So our second section is our About Us. Uh, you can see this is our team, me, Alex, Jeff, and Victoria, and pretty much we just discuss um, who we are, what we want to do going forward, um, and then as well as our background and qualifications uh, pertaining to our resume. Our business analytics projects, this is what we've done over the entirety of 443, um, starting with data visualiza visualizations in Tableau, uh, time series forecasting, as well as um, some SQL code you can check out there, and um, all the way going up to our final Monte Carlo project. And our final page we've brought to you is our goals and aspirations. We really felt like this is an important page to bring for many reasons. Um, first off, you know, post-graduation, a lot of people don't know what they want to do, and we want to share with you what we want to do and how we want to take our data analytics degree and use it going forward. So if you feel free, feel free to check that out and the rest of our projects, and I hope you enjoy the website. Data analytics is an extremely valuable tool in basically all industries. The main purpose is to take raw data and turn it into insights in order to apply it to business decisions such as supply chain or finance decisions. Uh, it's grown exponentially in the last 15 years, and it's an extremely valuable tool. So the first type of analytics that we covered this semester was descriptive analytics, and uh, this type uh, describes what's happened in the past. And examples can include data queries, reports, um, data visualizations, or descriptive statistics. And uh, one tool that we used to cover um, descriptive analytics this semester was through Tableau. So the next type, uh, or next level, uh, analytics is predictive analytics and that's where you take past data to assess future to see what's going to happen going forward so this is really big in the sports industry today looking at how players are reduced going forward it's going using finance as well and is um, one of the things we did in the class we did a regression project to look at graduation rates based off certain attributes of colleges and the last type is prescriptive analytics and that's used to determine the best course of action and the projects that we used in this class that cover prescriptive analytics is optimization, simulation, and also the data mining project. The first application that we used this semester was a data visualization tool called Tableau. And uh, we used this to create visuals of Chicago crime data from the years 2015 to 2016. So we got this data from the City of Chicago crime data portal and we use SQL to clean it of any errors in Microsoft Access. So next we imported this clean data into Tableau to create our visuals and uh, we drew, were able to draw some conclusions from them. Some of them, uh, one of them was actually that the most crime, the most type of crime com committed was theft and that made up 24% of all crimes committed in 2015-2016. Uh, now, of the 500,000 plus crimes that were committed in 2015 and 2016, only 23% uh, resulted in an arrest. Um, and we also found that during the summer months, the crime rate increases, whereas during the winter, it decreases. However, the New Year's Day and both years, 2015 and 2016, at 12 p.m., saw the most crime out of any other day in the year. And lastly, we found that Central District the central district has the most crimes, where the Lincoln district has the least, making it the safest place to live in Chicago. The next type of application we used during our Business 443 class was a regression analysis. And this is a predictive type of analysis. We look at past data to predict the future. So in our project, we looked at universities and uh, liberal arts schools and compared to see what their graduation rates were off of various independent variables. So we put these variables together and figured out which ones had more importance on a graduation percentage to find the optimal equation. In the end, we were able to find a curvilinear equation produced a stronger R squared than the linear model. And 
based off the requirements of having these different sets and having a 23% acceptance rate of uh, you know, X amount of students uh, in the top 10% of the class and so on. You saw that the curve linear percentage uh, reduction came out to 85.87 based off the uh, requirements. The next type of application used is SQL. It's a very common coding language used uh, in any type of business actually. You know, you can use a small business or large. Uh, Microsoft Office is obviously very affordable. So you're able to basically take all these data you have in your data set and manipulate it. So you take all these different databases, you take the required fields you want, and you take the desired data just by you know, using this formula. So essentially here, you're looking at it and you want to see which stores you have that have less sales than the year before. So when you're able to run this, you see, boom, here you have four stores in Indiana. Uh, these are the stores' titles, and those are their sales in comparison to the year before. So if you're as a director, you want to see, okay, what was it about these stores that I can use to make them more profitable in the future? Cluster analysis is often used to divide observations into different groups. And the goal of cluster analysis is to discover patterns in a massive set of data. In our cluster analysis project, we took the Virginia Heart data set and tried to find patterns in the data, but only for the patients who had died. Some of our most interesting findings include cluster 3's patients having the highest cholesterol levels, and it was also the most different cluster from the rest. Also, cluster 2 mostly consisted of non-smokers who were older at the time of death. They had lower cholesterol and blood pressure. The next application we used was decision trees. So this is very complicated. You can't just use a single method. It's a lot of variability in it. So it pretty much maps out all the different outlays of uh, different situations. So for instance, uh, for our project, what we did is we looked at coronary heart disease and what were the leading causes of the death. So as you look here, you can see age at death. It goes each way under at higher than a certain age. And then it breaks out into smaller and smaller categories. And we were able to find that there are three different types of um, functions that created that death. And you know, that was being over-diagnosed over, over at 65, um, dying under the age of 70, and having a, a blood pressure value of under 117. So as you can see, there's very different ways to predict this analysis and different uh, variables that you use to find that response in finding the heart disease. The next application that we used this semester was uh, Microsoft Excel's Excel Miner, and we used it to do KN or K nearest neighbors analysis. And what KN does, it compares um, data and classifies it into different groups, and it does this by measuring the distance between the records and the data set. So this semester we were given a list of customers uh, for a credit union. And we used KN to, de to determine which customers would be um, at high risk or at low risk for not paying the loan back to the bank. So we used KN and we were able to classify the customers into either the high risk or low risk groups. And from comparing the percent error and the confusion, confusion matrix along with the lift charts and the rock charts, um, we were able to. Uh, compare this KN model to a regression model and determine which would yield the most accurate predictions uh, for the bank. The purpose of optimization is to maximize or minimize a particular variable. In our project, we were trying to find the best website budget allocation for MedX devices to maximize the number of reached customers. And we found that the budget increases more customers are reached, except for budget increases from 18 to 20,000, 22 to 24,000, and 34 to 36,000, where within the budget range change, 35, 40, and 47 customers were reached respectively. And we recommend that the budget be set at 34,000, so a total of 47 customers are reached. So one of the final projects we did was a Monte Carlo simulation. Basically, it produces distributions of possible outcomes based on probability dis distributions. So these input variables can have different outcomes occurring based on the probability distributions that you set out for them. Uh, so 
probability distributions as an outcome are a much more realistic way of describing uh, uncertainty and variables of risk analysis. So in class we used Monte Carlo analysis to determine an MPV project for this company, whether we would accept or deny the project. Your main goal is to have an MPV at a positive number. So right now it's negative. If these were the assumptions, we would not take the project. If our assumption was 5% market growth factor, 23% market share growth rate, and a market size of 117 million, we would end up with negative 91 million as our MPV, so we wouldn't take the project. What Monte Carlo allows us to do is take each one of these assumptions, say market share, and instead of having a static assumption, we can then put in a normal distribution where, for this case, our mean would be 2 million and our standard deviation would be 400,000. So instead of having a one number that we use in this assumption, we have a wide range of numbers, but they're used accordingly to this distribution. Monte Carlo then takes all these different kinds of distributions and applies them to where they're applicable and then runs randomly thousands of times and comes up with another distribution of outcomes. So essentially what this has done is it's ran all these different probability distributions into our assumptions and come up with the fact that we have an 18.3% chance of breaking even, which in that case we wouldn't accept, but 76.9 plus 4.8 percent chance of having a project that's going to or produce a positive NPV. So therefore, we would take the project. Essentially, Monte Carlo allows us to get rid of single assumptions and use a more realistic probability distribution. Um, there are several types of distributions that you can use with Monte Carlo. One being a triangular where you have a most likely outcome, a minimum, and a maximum. So for market growth factor, we have a maximum of six. Most likely is 3% and minimum is 2%. So when it runs its assumptions, they use this distribution based on those numbers and uh, have a different, different inputs each time, but it runs this simulation thousands of times. That's where it gets the distribution from. So it's extremely useful in the world of finance, engineering, it's useful in almost anything to predict unpredictable or quote unquote unpredictable outcomes. Uh, so for finance you can use it to evaluate projects like this or you can use it to evaluate the usefulness of an investment portfolio and many other things.